Hey ho and heidi ho. Welcome to String Theory Fabric Art How To. Today we are going to look at how to zombear. Zombear comes in four sizes. 5x7, 6x10, 7x11, and 8x12. We're going to do the 7x11 today. Um, stuff you're going to need. You're going to need two pieces of medium to heavyweight cutaway stabilizer. You're going to need a couple of pieces of um, fabric for the body and for the appendages. You can use minky, you can use faux fur, you can use uh, fleece. I always sew out, and this is where Heather is going to be gnashing her teeth and rolling her eyes. I always use felt because felt is notoriously hard to work with. Um, for the 7 by 11 I'm going to need four pieces of 8 by 12 felt um, in the primary body color. I'm also going to need a small tidbit, probably four inches by four inches, of a highlight color that matches. Uh, this zombie bears in gray. The five by seven I did in uh, puke zombie green. The six by 10 I did in brown. Seven by 11 I'm doing in gray. And the eight by 12 I'll do in purple. That brings up another question, guys. Just because the designer digitized it or created it with one color scheme doesn't mean that you can't change it and do your own thing. That's why I'm going to start doing my stuffies in a whole bunch of different colors. Um, you'll also need a little piece of pink. Um, probably no more than 4x4 four four for the brain. You'll need some fiber fill. Yeah! Um, for those of you who are particularly anal retentive about sewing on anything with a nap, you will need some thin WSS. And of course, all of your various implements of destruction, scissors, tweezers, etc. So the first thing I do before I even sew out my first um, step is I print off my stitch sheet. For STFA, when you download that zip file, one of them will be a .pdf that gives you the stitch order and stitch colors for all of the pattern. The other PDF is usually a how-to for the end of hoop, in the hoops. Oh boy, this one's gonna be fun, isn't it? All right, so if you've never done an in the hoop before, designers are going to use all kinds of weird and wacky colors to force stops. So for the Zombear, you wanna do his appendages first, then his body. So here is his appendages um, PDF, color stitch file. And for the first five color stops, they're an off body color. For the brown bear, they were a tan. For the gray bear, they're going to be a, um, I think I'm gonna use this, uh, what do I call this? Dark Whisper Gray as a highlight color. Step six for Zombear appendages is going to be blood red. <laughs> and steps seven and eight are going to be white. And then your final step to put the back on before turning is going to be that off body color again. So for the gray Zombear, it's going to be dark whisper gray. Um, we'll get to the second stitch sheet when we get to the body. But remember for Zombear, you need to do his appendages first. Oh! Dude, I am so far, sorry I forgot. You're also gonna need one, two, three pieces of white vinyl because Zombear's got bone showing through. Um, your white vinyl pieces are probably gonna be no more than about two and a half, three inches wide by four inches long. I'll get you some exact measurements in the PDF. I am actually recording this as I'm testing it. <laughs> so here's hoping it all goes well. Step one, take your hoop, hoop some medium weight to heavy weight cut away, slap it in your machine, and run color stop one in your off body color. I'll be back with your dye line in just a minute. Okay, so here we, here we are back after you've run color step one, and it's a little hard to see 
has dark whisper on, gray on white, but these are your dye lines. Whenever you lay your fabric down, you want to make sure that all of the outlines of your zombear parts are thoroughly covered by your fabric. Now, conventional wisdom is that you need to secure this with pins or tape or 505 spray adhesive or something. Okay, if you are super paranoid and you want to give me your money because I've recently bought stock in 3M, you can tape it down, you can use some spray adhesive, you can pray to the gods that it doesn't move, but unless you're actually sewing on the deck of the Titanic as it sinks, fluting it just like this is going to be fine. It's not going to shift too much. The next thing you're going to do is you are going to run Color Stop 2, which is going to be a one millimeter larger outline of all of your pieces. Once you're said and done and you cut, those won't show, but they're going to help guide you and show you where things go and what's going on as you're doing the different decorative pieces of the appendages. I will be back to show you Color Stop 2 in just a minute. Okay, here we are, Color Stop 2. And seriously, guys, that's all it is. It's just an outline, okay? You don't have to worry about too much. That's just some guidelines to help you for the next couple of phases. Now we're going to run Color Stop 3, and I'm going to do it still in this off-body color, the Dark Whisper Gray for the Gray Bear. And uh, that's going to let us know where to put the inset for the ear. Okay, here we are. We've run the inset, the applique outline for the inset on the bare ear. I just took a little piece. It's probably two inches by three inches, which is way bigger than you need, but why not? And you lay it over. Okay, make sure you're covering your inset all the way, your applique position. And if you must, you can pin it, tape it, whatever, but it's going to grab itself and hold real well. I'm going to throw it back in the machine and run color stop four and be back in a minute. Okay, you'll note that color stop four was a two millimeter zigzag applique stitch. Now we're going to take our duckbill applique scissors. Woohoo! And this is where things are going to get real fun because I don't know that I have ever applique cut at this particular angle. But we are going to trim down our inset color all the way to the stitch line. So you may get the back of my head. You may get plenty of swearing on this. I am going to try to keep it in frame. All right. So the great thing about duckbill applique scissors is that this paddle lays on top of your stitches so that as you clip around the zigzag, it protects the stitch itself from accidentally getting snipped and having your applique fabric pull away from the stitch line. You'll see sometimes on appliques, if you snip the stitch line, it the fabric pulls to the inside and you've got a gap right there. These applique scissors are the best thing ever. Oops, I'm out of frame. Told you that was going to happen. Um, apparently, I can't talk and cut at the same time. That's okay. I can barely cut when I'm not talking, so it all works out in the wash. Ugh, that's a weird angle. Urgh. Yeah, a YouTube star, I am not, so. Actually, all of this is a little weird right now. Am I in frame? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. Um, and then twist it just, oops, a little bit more. And there's the last bit of it. There we go. Now we're going to throw this Mamma Jamma back in the machine. And it's going to run um, Color Stop 5. And Color Stop 5 does a whole bunch of stuff. Color Step 5 is going to do the satin stitch around the ear inset. It is going to do... Um, the paw pad and it is going to do what else is it going to do oh no i lied that's the two things it's going to do it's going to do the um, satin stitch around the paw and the paw pad or satin stitch around the ear and the paw pad back in a minute after color stop five 
Okay, folks, that was Color Stop 5. And like I said, it just did. Look at the cute little jelly bean paws. Yay, too bad he'll rip your face off and eat your brains. Um, it did the paw pad and it did the outline of the ear inset. It also placed three of your five positioning stitches and we'll talk about those when we get to the body. The next color, the next step is going to be color stop six. This is your blood. <laughs> and it'll stitch here and here, dripping blood. Back in a minute. All right, my little hobbits. So we just did color stop six that did the blood on the paws. It also gave you a dye line for the placement of your white vinyl so that you can do the bones. So go ahead and grab a couple little scrapettes. There you go, and just lay them over. Make sure that you cover the entire dye line. And we're gonna applique cut those, so I need to throw it in the machine and do color stop seven. Um, which is going to give you that zigzag tack down. And I'm a little paranoid because my vinyl is rolling up. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a couple pieces of tape. Tape those puppies down so that they don't shift while it's doing my zigzag. Seriously, that's all there is to it. Okie dokie pokies, we have done our uh, vinyl applique. I'm going to pull up my tape, get it out of the way, and now we are going to trim our vinyl as close to that stitch line as we can possibly get without clipping the stitch line. Remember when you're trimming applique, when you're trimming fobs, when you're trimming anything, you want to um, move your work and not your scissors, which is gonna be fun trying to keep it in frame. And again, these applique scissors are the bomb because the paddle lays over the stitches and keeps you from mangling those tack downs too much. And boy, I really hope you're not getting the back of my head because I didn't do my hair today. And this is the weirdest angle ever. And that one's gonna be out of frame, so I'm going to have to contortion this. Eventually, one of these days, guys, I promise I will learn how to tape all of this, videotape it, so it doesn't look like I don't know what I'm doing. Because, you know, Hollywood, you can lie. All right, so there's the first one. Are you seriously watching me for the full five minutes that it takes to cut this? Don't you have something more important to do? Isn't one of your machines yelling at you, come take care of this? Or the kid, or the husband, or the dog, or the wife, or the cat, or in Chris's case, the bird. All done. Okay, so there we are. We are applique cut. Next color stop is color stop eight. It's going to do the satin stitch around your bones. It's also going to do the last two placement stitches on the last two arm leg. And then it's going to put some numbers. And I'll explain your numbers in the next shot. Okie dokie pokies. That is all of the design stitch that we need to do for the um, 
Zombear appendages. We are done with everything that's going to show. You'll notice that our Zombear bones have been satin stitched, that our remaining paws have placement lines, and all of our appendages have been numbered. I do that because once you cut these out and turn them and stuff them, sometimes one paw looks like another paw or one appendage looks like another appendage, and it's really hard to figure out which one you need to place next on the body to get it to tack down. So I always start at the uppermost paw, or um, paw, bleh, appendage sticky outy bit for a two hoop, and that's gonna be one, and then you go clockwise, one, two, three, four, five. So when placing them on your body, you got your body down, find the uppermost one, that's gonna be number one, and then just go clockwise, it's gonna be number two, and you'll see one, two, three, four, five. Now some people have remarked um, in the prototype that uh, leg number three or appendage number three has nothing on it. This I did in purpose in case you wanted to personalize your zombear. Either put the name of the person receiving the zombear or you can name your zombear, Zeke the zombear, or you can put zombear. It's real simple to go into your embroidery machine, use the built-in fonts and you know, type out whatever you want and then embroider it right here. You wanna do that right now before we do the next step on the actual pattern, which is take a piece of matching fabric, float it on top. If you're paranoid, you can pin it or tape it, but you don't have to. Throw it in the machine and we're gonna run the last step, step nine, back in a minute. All right, there it is, guys. There are all of our Zombear appendages, all set and ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna pop them out of the hoop. There you go. And we're gonna do our trimming. All right, I am not gonna record all of this. I'll just record a little bit of it because you should be able to do this without me standing over your shoulder going, okay, this is the way you cut. And everybody has different preferences on which scissors to use for this part. Okay. Um, so you always want to cut between one quarter of an inch and one eighth of an inch away from your stitch line. Remember when you're cutting, you move the work and not the scissors. Okay. These are big, huge wide arcs. So you don't have to worry about clipping your stitches too much, clipping your curves. I mean, all right, so turning. Um, my preferred method of turning is to put a finger in, put my thumb there, and press it down around. You wanna to remember to roll your curves, roll your curves, and there is our ear, okay? I'll go ahead and do a paw for you, and I'll do a difficult paw. Let's go ahead and do one that has a bone. And then I'm gonna shut off the camera and cut the rest of them without you because you do not need a 10 minute video of me cutting and pasting. All right, so remember one eighth to one quarter of an inch away. Turn your work, not your scissors. Yay. Come all the way down, trim across the bottom. There you go, get it out of the way. Stick a finger up in there. Press your finger against your thumb and turn. Now because this one, oops, this one has vinyl, it's gonna be a little stiffer of a turn. But it's a bean stitch holding it together, so it'll be fine. All right, sometimes your um, seams don't wanna roll very well. Then you're just gonna grab a pokey outy bit, all right? Some people use a, um, the blunt end of a chopstick. Some people buy the fancy Turner tools on e Amazon, what have you. There you go. That is appendage number two. There's my ear. I'm gonna turn off the camera while I do the rest. Okie dokie pokey, there are all of our Zombear appendages. You got one ear at number one, one paw at number two, leg at three, leg at four, the other paw at five. Go ahead, have those cut and turned. You even might want to pre-stuff them a little bit. 
Remember guys, on stuffies, because you're gonna have to clear the ne needle head on an embroidery machine, you don't stuff these things um, like they're manicotti ready to explode, okay? Um, you want them with some body, okay? But you don't want them so full that they're not gonna clear the needle head, okay? So I'm gonna take my Zombear appendages with their stitch sheet and set them aside. And I have hooped some stabilizer, and I'm ready to do the Zombear body. Now remember, just like in the first part of this, the second part of this, um, there are gonna be some random colors um, to force stops because you have to do something, either place fabric or place paws or do the Macarena. Um, so steps one, through five can be the off body color. And remember for my gray zombie, I'm using dark whisper gray. Six is blood, seven, eight, nine, and 10 can all be white. 11 is black, 12 is a dark brown. That's gonna be his nose. 13 is going to be this off body color again, Ooh. which in my case for the gray zombie is the dark whisper gray. Steps 14 and 15 are pink. That's going to be your brain applique. 16 is blood. 17, I'm sorry, 16 is not blood. 16 is um, the cortical crisis in the brain, or I guess it's seeing the blood running through the um, folds of the brain. And then 17 is gonna be pink. That's gonna be the satin stitch around the brain. And then 18 through 23 are gonna be the off body color again. This is where we're gonna attach each of the five appendages and the back. And then on mine, I do a dead stop on all in the hoop projects. The very last stitch, in this case, number 24, bright red, stop, doesn't get sewn. The reason being, oops, yikes. The reason being is that forces your needle head to move to a corner rather than try to go over the center of your work and stop in the middle and do the little da-ding, I'm done. Um, if it thinks it's got one more left to go, it'll move down here to this corner and you can take your work off the machine without getting bunged up with all the stuffing in the middle. So, keep your stabilizer, grab your off body color thread and run your dye lines for your first fabric placement. Color stop one. Hey, hey, looky there, Zombody. That's right, we all just want Zombody to love us. Okay, so there's our dye line for the body. Grab your body color fabric and float it over. Make sure that you're covering everything up. All right, again, you can tape if you want to. You don't have to. It's not like uh, dancing. If you don't dance, I don't know you. Throw it in the machine and run color step two. Color stop two was done in the off body color for Gray Bear. I used Dark Whisper Gray. Again, it's just an outline. Now you do color stop three, which is the applique position stitch. Color stop three can be in the off body color too. Okay, kids, there's our applique position stitch. And again, we're gonna take a little bit of fabric that is off color from our body color. Um, just a, a little bit lighter. That's going to be his snout. So come here, little Mr. Snout. And again, if you're super paranoid, you can tape it down or pin it down, um, or you can just float it. Back in a minute. So we have just finished up step four. We're going to applique trim our snout. Okay, so remember with applique scissors, you want the paddle to lay against your stitches. You might wanna put a little positive tension, meaning you wanna pull a little bit, not a whole bunch, it's not tug of war, um, on your excess fabric so that you can get right down in there next to, but not on top of your zigzag stitches so you can get a nice close applique cut and you're not gonna have any fabric. Ooh, I am way off screen. Maybe if I turn this way, yeah, there we go. And snippy, snippy, pay attention to what you're doing. Be careful, go slow. 
This isn't a race, it's not a contest. Nobody hands out gold medals for who can applique cut the best. All right. Again, turn your work, not your scissors. You may have to turn your body if you're doing it at S. Ah, see? see, weird angles, bad camera, horrible lighting. It's like I'm doing home porn. Ooh, I did not say that. There you go. I'll clip. Throw that bad boy back into the machine, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run stitch five, which is going to be the tear, and step six, which is going to be blood, and step seven, which is going to be the eyeballs, and step eight, which is going to be the applique for the rib cage. So we will be back around step eight. Most of this will have something on it by then. Okie dokie pokies, we are back at it. We are going to be starting step nine, color stop nine, on our stitch sheet. Um, you'll notice that on color stop eight, it went ahead and did the die line for your applique placement. You'll need another little piece of white vinyl. You're gonna lay it right over that rib cage, yay. And again, if you're paranoid about slippage, you can go ahead and tape that puppy down a little bit, throw it into the machine, and run color stop nine in white to tack it down, then we'll come back and trim it out. Hello, my darlings. So, there is our zigzag applique. We're gonna pull off our tape. We're gonna grab our applique scissors, and we are going to carefully trim as close to those zigzag stitches as we possibly can get without actually clipping the stitches themselves. Okay, big wing ugly. All right, remember, turn and stay in frame. Remember, turn your work, not your scissors. Or in my case, you know, turn your body because I have to stay in camera let's see if I'm gonna be able to do this yeah I think I'm it's like playing twister with scissors which is gonna be a trip to the ER I'm sure Stand. Yep, I am. Boy, this has got to be fascinating TV. It's like watching the Discovery Channel, the uh, migratory habits of waterfowl as they just sit around the lake and eat worms. Uh, might be more fun to go out in the front yard and watch squirrels throw themselves into traffic. But y'all are the ones that want to watch, oops, in camera, watch all this stuff. So here I am. There you go. And one last. Boom. All right. Done. Praise Jeebus. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to throw this puppy in the machine and we are going to run color step 10, which should be the white satin stitch around the wet rib cage. Color step 11, which is going to be the eye detail and the mouth detail. Color step 12, which is his nose. Color step 13, which is going to be off-body color snout. And color step 14, which will be the applique position for the brains. Back in a minute. 